Hello and welcome back. And today we will be reading a book called The Bog Baby. But first, we're going to do our mindfulness breathing. So if you have a feather in your house, pause the video now and go and get one. Or if you don't like me, you can just pretend. So when I chime the bar, you're going to put your feather up in the air and you need to try and keep it up in the air just using your breath. Okay? You'll need your eyes open for this one. Off we go. It's tricky. Fantastic. Now let's get reading. So this is The Bog Baby, written by Jean Willis, who actually came to our school. She is amazing. And she's really lovely and very glamorous too. And it's illustrated by Gwen Millwood. And it's published by Puffin Books. Long ago, when we were little, me and Chrissy did something bad. We said we were going to Annie's house to play, but we didn't. We went fishing, all by ourselves, which wasn't allowed. Chrissy said there was a magic. There was a magic pond in the Bluebell Wood. It was only, only ever there in spring. When it rained, it made a huge puddle in the dell and pond creatures came. We could fish for newts, she said. I won't tell if you won't. So we went. We found the pond. It was squelchy around the edge. The bluebells squeaked under our boots. We fished and fished, but didn't catch a newt. We caught something much better. We caught a bulk baby. He was the size of a frog, only round and blue. He had boggly eyes and a spiky tail. And I do remember he had ears like a mouse. He came swinging through the st flower stalks and jumped into the water. He floated up and down on his back and sucked his toes. It's like what real babies do. That's when I fished him out. He didn't struggle. He sat in my hand and looked surprised. He was as soft as jelly, like he had no bones. When we stroked him, he flapped his wings. They were no bigger than daisy petals. They seemed too small for him to fly. Chrissy said he might be able to fly if we blew on his wings. Let's have a go. Hmm. We blew and blew, but all we did was blow him onto the mud. He didn't try to escape. He just sat still with his paws over his eyes. We put him in a jam jar, took him home and hid him in the shed. He was our bog baby. He wasn't meant to be secret. We wanted to show mum, but we daren't. If we did, she'd know we didn't go to Annie's. We made our bog baby a beautiful home in a bucket with gravel, shells, clean water. Whenever he saw us, he jumped up and down. We picked him up and played with him. He was very ticklish. We fed him on cake crumbs. We loved our bog baby. Our friends loved him too. We'd sneaked him into school in a margarine tub. When the teacher wasn't looking, he played in the sandpit and the water tray. In the afternoon, he slept in his tub on a tub on a piece of damp cotton wool. Chrissy made him a collar and a lead and we took him for walks in the field. Once a crow nearly ate him, but we scared it away just in time. We took great care of our bog baby. At least we tried, but he got sick. He didn't jump up and down anymore. He went pale and his wings drooped. He wouldn't touch his cake crumbs. We gave him all sorts, but he spat them out. We wanted to ask mum for help, but we daren't because of Annie. He wouldn't come out, but the bog baby got thinner. He wouldn't walk on his lead. He hid under his shell. He wouldn't come out no matter how much we loved him. 
Mum found us in the shed. Chrissy wouldn't say why we were crying. We promised not to tell, but I blabbed. Mum wasn't angry though. When she saw who was in the bucket, she smiled and her eyes went misty. She said she hadn't seen a bog baby since she was little. Please make him better, we cried. We love him so much. I know, she said, but the bog baby is a wild thing. He doesn't belong here. He isn't meant to eat cake or walk on a lead or sleep in a tub. She picked up the bucket and we followed her out. If we really loved the bog baby, we had to do what was best for him, no matter how much it hurt us. That was real love. That's why we let him go. Back where he belonged. He's got a big smile on his face now. Living in the wood, playing in the pond, sleeping in the damp leaves under the moon. We never saw him again. I think he grew up and had babies of his own. Last spring, my daughter found the magic pond and guess what she saw? Hundreds of bog babies swinging through the bluebells, catching flies, floating on their backs, sucking their toes. That's what she told me and that's what I believe. So that story is telling us that things need to stay where they belong because that's where they thrive. So if your activity today to do with this book, you can make your own bog baby. I'll put the link for the Pinterest page in the comments. And if you've already made a bog baby, maybe you can make those homes out of a bucket and put shells in there and put your bog baby in there. Thank you very much.